Hi, this is Lucy, your Clarity Coach, and this is Tuesday Talks at 3. It is the month of July and um, we are officially in the second half of the year. Welcome to the Taking Back Control series. Now this is a series that focuses on the areas of our lives that need our attention especially now that we have enough time to course correct. Up as an entrepreneur, whether as a startup or fully operational one. Now my guest today is Rachel Ndongo and I can see that she has already joined us right here. And let me just allow her in in a minute and there we go all right Rachel if you can see the invite please go ahead and accept it so in a moment she will be joining us And there she's coming on. She's an early stage startup builder, an angel investor, and a policy champion in matters, technology, innovation, and MSMEs. So if you are an MSME, you are in the right place right now. Our guest today is Rachel Ndongo, and she is a co-founder and CEO for Biashara Africa. Now, if her company name is anything to go by, it at least gives us the assurance that indeed we are in the right place with her because then she is able to share with us her insights on startups, on businesses that are already in a growth stage or those that are in maturity. She is the one who helps the community of women and youth owned small businesses that champions digital and financial inclusion with an aim of creating sustainable livelihoods and employment in Africa. This is so key in today's world and we're so happy to have Rachel. And I just want to welcome her. I think we have lost her. Uh, Rachel, are you there? I believe that uh, she is trying to, to join us. Well, let's try it again. Just try it again right there. Rachel, you may need to log out and log back in so that you have the opportunity to see my invitation and then come back on. I'll just try, try one last time, Rachel. Okay, you, you may need to log out, Rachel. If you can hear me, kindly log out and then log back in so that we can have the conversation. Yes, yeah, so to, today we are here talking about entrepreneurship. And I have explained that Today, we are seeking to know how best to show up as an entrepreneur. And why now? Well, it follows that we all have New Year's resolutions. And this year would not be any different. So you would have an idea of what you want your business to do this year. Yes, of course, you're a business person. Or perhaps you are somebody who who wants to start up a business and you decided that 2023 was your year. So as you are doing this, you want to be in a position of having a game plan. And when you have it all written down, it is said that only 3% of people actually write down those goals of theirs. So you want to be part of that 3% to write down your goals and ensure that you are following through on them. So Rachel will be here to share with us how it is that you need to be showing up 
and showing out. And I know you've heard of this term today, which is showing out. It just means showing up in excellence, ensuring that when you do show up, you are ahead above everybody else. And how you do that, we'll be hearing from Rachel. Now, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm a recently um, uh, made entrepreneur, simply and purely because I was in the corporate world. And so being in the corporate world has given me that opportunity to know how businesses run. But that is somebody else's business, not mine. And when it is somebody else's business, you get to show up in a different way because you show up as an employee. So now as an entrepreneur and having a discussion with Rachel, I do realize that I have ticked all the boxes, but there are some that I need to work on. And I do hope that this insight that Rachel is going to share with us today is going to be the same for you and it's going to, to resonate with you. Now, one of the first things that uh, Rachel did point out to me is that each entrepreneur needs to have passion and persistence. And I couldn't agree more. For the longest time, I struggled with this passion of mine. And my passion is to help people. I love to help people. I love to show up for people, to be able to, to be in that space where somebody needs help and I'm reaching out. And as I'm reaching out, what am I doing? So I am teaching. As I'm reaching out, I am working with you, holding your hand. I am not only holding your hand, I am actually um, coaching you. And this is what I do nowadays. And in some cases, I am mentoring. And I mentor you in this space. We are able to meet my desired need. Because remember, my vision is to help people. And I'm very specific about my vision. My vision is to help people get transformed. That is my main vision. And specifically, as you're getting transformed in that growth, where are you today? Where do you want to be? And then how do we get there? And these are the conversations that we have. But I need to know that that is what I want to do. So my question is to you, and we can sample it here in the chat. Do you have a desire to be an entrepreneur? And if you do, if you say yes, what is it that you want to do? And what would you like to experience today? So when Rachel joins us, she's able to share with you. So that passion that you have, is it able to be um, demonstrated in the things that you do? Well, here's my passion. I am on screen with you every Tuesday because this is my passion. This is what I absolutely love to do. I love to teach. I love to share the knowledge that I have. And so I keep on paying it forward. At times, it's not easy. And this is where the persistence comes in. Because then when you have persistence, you are able to show up despite the ups and downs that happen or that is called life. So I'll give you an example. When I started out as an entrepreneur, I was very challenged with the digital world. Uh, I'm not going to say my age, but you already have an idea if I'm already saying that. So I was analog by nature. And the traditional ways of doing things, I will always fall back on them because they are tried and tested. And it's things that I have lived with. But it became for me something that held me back, something that made me fearful to try out something new. And that was the digital world. So I played around with it. I, I was so scared. I was fearful. And needless to say, I, I was literally held hostage by my insecurities. What if, what if, what if? One of the what ifs is exactly, I think what uh, uh, Rachel is experiencing right now is what if the system does not work with me, you know, the technology? And maybe because I, I don't understand what I'm supposed to be pressing, what I'm supposed to be sending. And then there was this whole world of social media. And I watched people actually creating a brand on social media. And I had challenges about the way I looked. My hair, my, my hair is gray. I have bloodshot eyes. I have wrinkles. My teeth are not pearly white, neither are they straight. So I was already telling myself 
that I would never make it on screen like this. These were the challenges I was having the minute I decided that I was an entrepreneur and I needed to help people because that was my passion, but I needed to be visible. Now to be visible meant I had to show up in places like this, but I ended up feeling very limited. And this was because of my insecurities. But you know what I did? My passion, I did it afraid. So my question to you right now is, what is it that you want to do as an entrepreneur? And please share with me here. I can see we are all joining. Thank you so much for joining. I see Nelly, you're here. In fact, Nelly is one of my participants for the Awakening Self program that we are running and we are on day two. Thank you so much, Nelly, for signing up and thank you for coming here today. Uh, I can see uh, Date and I know that is John John. Welcome, John John. I do hope that what we're discussing today on entrepreneurship is going to give you an opportunity to think about a business that you want to start. Maybe you have a dream, John John, and this is what you want to build. I do hope you have the passion and the determination and persistence uh, that is required. And I can see there is oh, yeah. Joanne. Welcome, Joanne. I can see that there's Milan over here. Welcome, Milan. So good to see you all. Yes, and Nelly, you say you're happy to be here. Good to have you. And I can see that Rachel has joined, but then again, she's dropped off. So just speaking about this, and as I wait for you to drop in your comments there as to what kind of business you're dreaming about having, uh, you have maybe, perhaps you have a passion, uh, and maybe you want me to define what a passion could be. Well, my passion is to help people. What's your passion? Maybe you want to create something with your hands, and that could become a business, and you can actually monetize it and for you to be able to monetize, it means you have to do it afraid. In, in our session today, Awakening Self, uh, one of the participants talked about taking risks. She was risk averse in the beginning, but because life has happened and she has seen the positive light, she has now become a risk taker. When you become an entrepreneur, news alert, you are a risk taker because you have a passion. Who said? anybody else is aligned with your passion. You have no assurance that this is the truth, but you go ahead and you do it. So you've put it out there. You have put out your logo, the name of your company, and you have said to people that there is this need and this is my solution. Of course you ask yourself, but who's gonna want my solution? There's so many people in this space. How do I know that I'm going to succeed with this solution? Well, that is being a risk taker. You are doing it afraid. Therefore, a high level of persistence, consistency, determination is what is needed. It's been three years of me doing Tuesday Talks at three, and I am here today in a more comfortable setting. If I could only dig up, if I could only dig up what I did in my first year, I'm sure it will sell out as a comedy series. I know I must have been stiff. I must have been so nervous to make mistakes and it must have shown on my face and in my body language. But here I am today. Today, I'm so comfortable in this space. I listen to what you're saying. I respond to the need that you have. And I am not ashamed at all to say I have made mistakes. And so I am able to have that room for flexibility and to change what it is that I'm doing already. So for instance, uh, taking, talking about risks, TikTok was the thing that scared me the most when it came to online matters. And I imagine TikTok, the kind of audience that is on TikTok is not my kind of audience. That was an excuse. That was an excuse on my part. I was scared to go on TikTok. Why? Because what I understood TikTok to be was that people were taking videos of themselves working or, or in whatever craft that they're in, this is what they were doing. And then you could see they were very fluid in their movements and if they were singing, if they were you know, miming, if they were reading out something, if they were playing music, if they were creating. And then TikTok is limited with the number of minutes that you have. And I said to myself, I can't do this. What I ended up doing is having a curious mind. 
I ended up learning the things that I was most afraid of are the things that I showed up for. And needless to say now, I have a TikTok platform. And you can check it out. It's Lucy, your clarity coach. You can check it out. And please share with me where you think I can improve. Because right there, I have played around with the different templates. I found those. I've played around with the different colors. I found those. I've played around with the music. I realize now some of the music you cannot use is copyrighted. I've played around with so much on TikTok, but I know there's still so much that we can do and I can join in. And I'm super excited to do that. So the curiosity that comes beyond the persistence and my passion is a continuous learning. So what did I do with my continuous learning? And I'm hoping that these exercises or these examples are giving you a chance. I can see, Rachel, you're really struggling to join. Um, I'm not sure why. I keep on saying accept and you're unable to come in, but you will join us. I'm sure that you will. So continuous learning. I have decided that I'm not going to stop learning. Just last week, I got my certification in NLP. So now I'm a certified practitioner. How did that happen? I kept on learning. I have this thirst to be able to have this knowledge so that I can share it because I've seen a need. Now, during the pandemic and out of the pandemic, I can see that there's a need for help in areas of mental health awareness. Now, NLP is one of those things that helps you understand how the neurons of the human being in the brain works and how it is they can be able to interact with information. So let's look at interacting with situations. Today, you've been given an assignment that you have dreamt about, or your goal is now coming into fruition, or you have just been asked at this point to stand up and speak in front of people. These are now the things that could trigger you to start feeling that you're not good enough. Now, as an NLP practitioner, I now have the tools to help you step up, whether it is at the 11th hour, whether it is from an area of preparation, perhaps that's what you need to prepare to present. I'm one of those people. I need to prepare. I need to spend time with my content. And if you are that kind of a person, then I am the coach for you. You need to be able to understand why do I need to prepare? How do I prepare? How is my body responding? There are certain things in NLP that I absolutely loved. And it was those trigger points in your mind that show you where you're at. And one of them is your body language. And I'm sure you can relate to this as I say this. Have you ever turned a corner down onto a dark street? Or maybe the, the sun is out shining, but you walk down this road or you enter this building, you just get this sense that, or your intuition, your sixth sense is saying, you shouldn't have come this way. This is your body telling you something. And many a time we don't respond to that, shall I call it sixth sense or intuition? to that voice that speaks to you. Because then your body reacts, either the hair on your back stands up or you start to feel uh, clammy and sweaty. You've got a very thin line of sweat on your skin or you start to feel dizzy. This is your body telling you something. And now the art of NLP has made me even perfect it better. So that is continuous learning. And you need to stay committed to continuous learning. And this is what I have done, and I'm hoping that this is helping you. So I was hoping to hear right here on the chat that people would have an idea. And I can see Ivy Matiso here. So good to see you. And I can see uh, Paul. Paul, it's been a minute. Great to see you here. So we are talking about entrepreneurship. You need to stay committed. You need to come up with new skills. You need to have new knowledge. You need to have new trends. So the trend now is artificial intelligence. And that's my next learning to see how I can plug into that to bring my information to you and the learning platforms even at a higher and better level. But all this we do so that we can be able to meet the need of our customers. Now, my customers come to me for personal development. 
My customers come to me because they are experiencing certain paradoxes in their lives. They've come to a transition and perhaps they don't know how to move forward. My customers come to me because they're dealing with anxiety, perhaps anxiety attacks, and they don't know how to calm it down. My customers come to me because of identity crisis. They believe they are this person until they were shown they are somebody else. How then are we able to you know, unpack this? And this is what I do as a coach. So I bring you personal development skills. Every time that I open my mouth to speak with you today, as I was running the Awakening Self, it was more about me listening to my customers. So tomorrow I'm able to meet that need. And the feedback that I keep on asking for, it's scary to ask for feedback, guys. Take it from me. But it is so fulfilling to get the feedback. So you need to overcome that fear of asking somebody, so what did you think? What did you learn today? Uh, drop me a review. Do it. Because it improves you. You get new skills. Now I need to learn about artificial intelligence. Because for my own customers, it is very clear that that is where we are moving to. So though we are on digital right now, and I'm actually acing it, there's still room for improvement. And now I'm going to move on to AI. And I do hope you will still be with me when I'm here sharing my success of how I finally signed up. I am so scared. I finally signed up and I did it afraid. So how many of us here have our dreams and are still going ahead to do them afraid? Please just share with me here in the chat. I'd love to be able to sample some of your answers. Um, and I can see Rachel is here. She's unable to join. And she says she's happy to join the conversation. So maybe, Rachel, you could just drop in for us some of the gems that we can share here. If I was to ask you what is a call to action to anybody who is a startup, or what is um, a call to action to anybody who's looking for an angel investor, just drop us some, some notes here so that we can read because I can see that you have struggled to join us. Absolutely sorry about that, but I'm sure you can share with us some information. And then comes the execution and the action because I've talked to you about the passion and persistence of entrepreneurship. That means you need to know what you want to do. You need to have a dream. Take it down from the shelf. Put some words and some plans to it and then you need to start. So execution and action. The idea itself is not enough, guys. You need to pick it. And these were words that Rachel shared with me. She said to me, Lucy, ideas themselves are not enough. Ideas are not going to put food on the table. Ideas are not going to start your business. Ideas are not going to get you the funding that you need. So what do you need to do? You need to get your idea Put it into goals. And as you have the goals, break them down into actionable tasks. And I always say this to anybody who would hear what I'm saying. It takes 21 days to form a habit. So in those actions, practice, practice, practice. There are days I say to you, it'll be so hard. It'll be so hard to practice. Let me give you an example. So as I was becoming an entrepreneur, what I ended up doing was learning how to go live like this. And uh, one of the people that I sought to help me said that I needed to practice for 21 days. And all I needed to do was take my phone and video myself at least for 30 seconds and do that for 21 days. So I can tell you the first seven days, and I kid you not, the first seven days, were the easiest because I was committed, I was full of motivation, I was driven, I knew where I was going towards, and I always had content I created, and I did it. And I enjoyed the success. Ladies and gentlemen, day eight was one of the hardest days. I then began to realize that I did not have the passion to wake up and do it again. And as the days progressed right up to day 14, I became worse in this habit. It was becoming later and later and later in the day. It got to the point on day 14 that I was actually doing my videos at 11.59 p.m. Just so that I can say I did it for 21 days. At this point, I wasn't doing it for the right reasons. It is because I had to report to somebody that I had done it. 
so that you need an accountability partner. You definitely need an accountability partner because there was no way that I was going to do this on my own. By day 14, I was recording at 11.59. When I woke up to day 15, something had shifted in me. And now I was doing it not at 11.59, but maybe 10 p.m. And slowly it was coming down. By day 21, I was used to the sound of my voice because when I first heard my voice, I couldn't stand the pitch. I couldn't stand it. I was now used to the way I am very um, full of expressions. So I use my hands. And because I was videoing, I was using this one hand. And when I would change it around, I would use this hand. This is what I was doing. Uh, I now became used to how my teeth showed up on the video, how my eyes showed up, how my wrinkles showed up. And guess what? I was now getting used to that image. Now, this particular exercise I am sharing with you is a personal exercise, something that I went through. And I'm loving what Rachel is dropping here, so I do hope you're reading those gems that she is dropping. What I did is I executed. I ended up breaking it down and I also learned in this particular exercise that I did to create content what was I going to talk about for under 60 seconds I was I became good at it and today all you have to look at is my social media and see how it is I'm pushing through I come up with content all the time and all because I was so consistent. And I can see that's what's coming up right now with Rachel, my guest. Rachel, you're saying be consistent as an entrepreneur. And that is what I did. I became very, very consistent in everything that I did. And that is how I showed up. And you know what? I showed out. I now became excellent in what it was I was doing. And so it is important that as you have a sense of curiosity, as you have a sense of you being able to show up and stay committed. Able to show up and stay committed. And I can see that Rachel has finally managed to join us. I just want to read a few things that she had shared with us before this. She said, continuous learning. Remain committed to lifelong learning. And I can see uh, Sharon Bet, you've joined us. Lovely for you to join us all the way from the United States of America. And then Rachel Ndomo, you say execution and action. Take action. Break down your goals into actionable sets. Steps, I beg your pardon. Set deadlines, I love that. And execute your plan. So I would add there, have an accountability partner. She goes ahead to say, have discipline and determination. Yes, discipline and determination. I would add there, be self-motivated. How do you get self-motivated? You need to know your purpose. What am I starting this business for? How do I want to grow this business? I'm going to do it afraid anyway. Just know that when you have that continuous learning that Rachel tells us about, you will be in a different situation than you were yesterday. Today is another day. Every day I, I learn something new. Just today I learned something else and I love to cook. And I know you have heard me say this because you are joining me. So today I was making uh, wraps. And uh, one of the wraps had been exposed in the fridge for over a week. So it had become really crisp and rock hard. You know with wraps, you need to warm them so that you can put the filling and then wrap it. And I tried to warm it and it couldn't warm. Anyway, I put the filling and I, crazy, but I tried to wrap it and it all broke. And what did I learn today? That all I had to do was moisture, put some moisture on this wrap and warm it and it would be malleable. Today I learned something new. Rachel, so good to finally see you. Just as we are coming to the end of our session, we've been able to talk about entrepreneurship. And I introduced you as an entrepreneur. I said, you are an early stage startup builder and angel investor and a policy champion in matters technology innovation and msmes i said that you are the co-founder and ceo of the ashara africa and you have this aim to creating sustainable livelihoods and employment in africa and we've managed to cover a bit of ground when it came to entrepreneurship the one thing i did not introduce you as which you wear as your hat 
is that you're a founder of the Fibroids Center, a women health tech inspired by your own experience. We have five minutes left of our show today. Could you tell us a little <laughs> bit about this Fibroids Center, Rachel? Yeah, thank you um, very much, uh, Lucy, for your patience. Uh, I really enjoy it, and, and, and I hope you can very hear me. Loudly, very clearly, and technology does this. Uh, this is what happens with technology. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just happened. Um, I'm glad that I've managed to join um, and covered what I was actually to cover. So I'm just enjoying as you're talking uh, about uh, what, what, what entrepreneurs should do. So I will not dwell into that uh, because you, you have done it very well. Um, I'm the uh, founder of Fibroid Center, an initiative uh, that supports women uh, and create awareness around fibroids and connect women to gynecologists. Uh, this initiative was inspired by my experience and struggles with fibroids. And so I thought, why don't I start um, an e-health platform uh, that educates women uh, who are within the reproductive age bracket. 25, we mainly focus uh, with women uh, between the age of 25 to 49 mainly, but anyone within the reproductive age. So we have a platform where you can visit and learn about fibroids at your convenience. Uh, it's fibroids.center. Fibroids, F-I-B-R-O-I-D-S dot C-E-N-T-E-R. Fibroids dot center, uh, the center, and you can learn about fibroids. You can also book a gynecologist and uh, have you checked uh, and access treatment. Uh, if, if you're not uh, a woman, I would uh, request that uh, you also share this information with women within your network. Uh, so that's about the Fibroids uh, Initiative. Uh, it's supported by Biashara Africa um, and uh, Avenue Healthcare, as well as uh, Old Mucho. Those are our partners for, for the initiative. Uh, so thank you so much, uh, Lucy. Uh, very grateful to be I'm here so today. I'm so happy that you finally made it. And in fact, as you speak about fibroids, you bring out something on entrepreneurship. You talk about e-health platform. And this is where we are going right now with entrepreneurs, um, Rachel, and correct me if I'm wrong, our audience the, or our clients or our targets um, are actually always on their phones, on some gadgets. And therefore, this is a great way to get to people the convenience of having an e-platform. What would you tell us, for those of us who are here, who have ideas. How can we start an e-platform with our ideas? Any ideas for us? Um, yeah, it, it all depends on what you want to achieve. Uh, in our case, uh, we decided to have a chatbot. So we have a chatbot on Facebook. Um, and, and so you can just the same way you chat with a human being or with your friends. So and, and, and you decide what to discuss. So with our chatbot um, at Fibroid Center, you, you can then learn, learn about fibroids. If you want to learn uh, how to, um, to if, if you want to book a doctor, then you do it. If you want to learn about fibroids, then you learn about that. If you want to learn about the symptoms of fibroids, if you want to learn when to see a gynecologist uh, that then, then you get to learn about that so that's the the, the route we took uh, having a chatbot because we thought that that would be uh, more useful uh, to 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 this women however if uh, you sell tangible items uh, it depends also where your clients are if your clients are on Facebook or Instagram social media platforms then you have an opportunity to create um, an e-commerce or a, an online shop 
So these platforms have um, what we call a product catalog. So you could opt for that. Um, if you're a bit more advanced, you could possibly have an e-commerce platform or a website. You could also create an online shop, uh, depending on your size and what you want to achieve. Um, so again, you could uh, utilize marketplaces like Jumia uh, and, and, and post your products there. You could also, if you're a small business, uh, have your business listed on the small business catalog by Biashara Africa, um, where I work. Um, yeah, so those this these are some of the options you'd opt for. If you're someone like Lucy uh, and they're looking at uh, educating the masses using webinars, podcasts, uh, live discussions, then you could uh, learn a few things from Lucy. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we, we've lost her there for a moment. As she is just getting back her internet connectivity, you can hear if you have a service, it can come through chatbot. If you've got tangible items, it can come through an e-commerce or an online shop. Although she tells us about the differentiators, whether it is service or it is a product, you also have the opportunity to list your business. You don't have to spend so much money in doing this on your own. Your resources can be used in a better way. Marketplaces like Jumia, we've heard about Jumia, that is a platform. You can be able to put your dream there and let somebody else take care of the back end. All you need to do is just put out your product there. So in entrepreneurship, if you had a dream beginning of this year and it has fallen on the wayside, it's not the end of the world. This is the middle of the year. It is July. It is your opportunity to course correct. I do hope that the little tidbits that we have received from Rachel's richness, because she shared this information with me, will help you. Be curious. Ensure that you have a passion. Continuous learning be determined, execute an action. And I want to thank you so much for joining me today. The episode will be up on our YouTube channel, which is LMC Consultancy, as usual by this evening. Hop on there and subscribe for updates on our sessions. Now, like I mentioned earlier on, we are in day two of the Awakening Self, and already the participants are, re are registering aha moments. And Nelly, a shout out to you for being one of my participants. Thank you so much. We had Petra Lila yesterday saying, I now know how to rate myself and where to put more effort to advance in every aspect of my life. We had Mbide saying, change is possible. And if I am ready to change, then this has benefited me because it is me who needs to change. No one is coming to me make me change. Huh? We continue to bring you information on personal development and next week is no different. Our guest will be speaking on taking back control on matters family. You don't want to miss that. In the meantime, check out our courses on our website www.lmcconsultancy.com. Our social media platforms have great ways to improve your life and get you from where you are to where you want to be. Find us on Instagram right here. Please drop me a message here. I'd like to feel that we are talking and engaging. Uh, you'll find me on Facebook as Lucy, your clarity coach, on LinkedIn as Lucy, your clarity coach, and on TikTok as Lucy, your clarity coach. Let us help build each other. Until then, be kind to yourselves. Bye-bye now.